there are only four periods in the last 500 years where media has changed enough to qualify for the label revolution. The first one is the famous one, the printing press. Movable type, oil-based inks, that whole complex of innovations that made printing possible and turned Europe upside down starting in the middle of the 14th. Then a couple of hundred years ago, there was innovation in two-way communication, conversational media. First the telegraph, then the telephone. Slow, text-based conversations, then real-time voice-based conversations. Then about 150 years ago, there was a revolution in recorded media other than print. First photos, then recorded sound, then movies, all encoded into physical objects. And finally, about 100 years ago, the harnessing of electromagnetic spectrum to send sound and images through the air, radio and television. This is the media landscape as we knew it in the 20th century. This is what those of us of a certain age grew up with and are used to. The world as it was at the end of the 20th century. It exists now only as part of a neural interactive simulation that we call the Matrix. This is the world as it exists today. I thought we could mark this November the 5th by taking some time out of our daily lives to sit down and have a little chat. Words will always retain their power. The books have nothing to say. The people that read them and makes them unhappy with their own lives, makes them want to live in other ways, they can never really be. You're nothing but zombies, all of you. Just like those husbands of yours you don't even know anymore. You're not living, you're just killing time. If you want to have a conversation in this world, you have it with one other person. If you want to address a group, you get the same message and you give it to everybody in the group. Whether you're doing that with a, a broadcasting tower or a printing press. That was the media landscape as we had in the 20s. Social media is not media at all. It is speech, period. Internet is the first medium in history that has native support for groups and conversation at the same time. With the internet, it is very early days. It is time to make the corrections, and one hopeful place is to restart some conversations we allowed to get derailed. I just... Uh... I wanted to talk to you. Okay. Let's talk. It is time to make the corrections, and one hopeful place is to restart some conversations we allowed to get derailed. What do you want to talk about? I... I can't really remember. We close down conversations and much to our detriment by getting into performance mode on the network in both our personal and our professional lives. Personally, there's been a tendency to use social networking to perform an ideal self. Many people tell me they don't like to show flaws and vulnerabilities or share bad news online with friends. They say things like, it just doesn't seem like the place to talk about problems. Not even, as one woman put it, the death of my dog. So certainly not about more serious problems. So the more time we spend online, the more we keep a lot of things to ourselves, even, even, as we think we're updating our status and updating our status and sharing ourselves with the world. But very often we're sharing what makes us look good. We're sharing what's easy to share. Business people, lawyers, consultants tell me that in their work environments, they don't want to leave an electronic trace of asking for help or admitting failures and frustrations. So we make it harder to fix problems. We make it harder to be mentored. So we cut off conversations in our friendships, 
and we cut off conversations in our professional life that would improve our performance on the job. The path ahead is challenging, but clear for both institutions and individuals, for both love and money, the next task for all of us is to restart those necessary conversations. This is not novel at all. This is the truth. This really happened to me. I'm gonna kill you. It happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. Speech is in danger this year. So are relationships, sometimes for well-meaning reasons. Uh, we see that, you know, Facebook is just a place where we share, where we connect, where we talk, but there's a techno panic going on around this idea that we have a new technology and that we must regulate it, we must stop it. Well, I would urge you in this next year to recognize that we must not only get enamored of our new tools and toys and our new ways to communicate with each other, we have an obligation and a necessity to protect this freedom. Governments will not do it because governments are a threat to this. They are threatened by this disruption. Companies cannot do it because that's not their mission in life. We, the people of the net, must protect the net. Social media is not media at all. It is speech, period. It's people talking. <laughs>